I would like to begin by thanking you all for being here today. Je vais vous donner les informations sur notre procédure en français puis en anglais. Mais d'abord, permettez-moi de vous présenter les gens de l'Alliance contre le gaz de schiste du Nouveau-Brunswick, Nabasca au raccourci. À côté de moi, OK, à côté de moi, c'est Jim Emberber, ils ont changé l'ordre, euh, qui, qui est partie du, de Nabasca. Denise Melançon, aussi partie de Nabasca. Et l'avocat pour Nabasca, Larry Kowalchuk. Et qui est le, le président de, de Nebraska. I have a little housekeeping information. Puis, une fois, une fois que, après la présentation, il est dans à peu près 10 minutes, il répondra à vos questions. I have a little housekeeping information on this procedure this afternoon, and I'll give it in French, then in English. But first, let me introduce the New Brunswick Anti-Shell Gas Alliance at the table here today. Firstly, is Jim Emberger, Denise Menonçon, the uh, lawyer for the um, Nebraska, Larry Kowalchuk, and Roy <laughs> That's what you get for changing the order. <laughs> S'il vous plaît, notez que les questions d'ordre technique ou juridique seront répondues par M. Kowalchuk et doivent donc être posées en anglais. Les questions sur le gaz de schiste seront répondues par Mme Melançon ou M. Emberger. Mme Melançon répondra aux questions de gaz de schiste posées en français. Quand vous êtes arrivé ici, je crois que chacun de vous avait reçu une copie de communiqué de nouvelles et la déclaration de Nebraska de revendication contre la province du Nouveau-Brunswick, ainsi que d'autres informations sur les dossiers de presse. Dans un instant, le président de Nebraska, Roy Rees, fera une déclaration. Il précédera ensuite la session de questions et réponses. S'il vous plaît, demandez vos questions à M. Rees et il fera référence à l'une des personnes à la table. Enfin, après les questions, il devra avoir du temps pour les entrevues plus longues avec les porte-parole de Nebraska. Please note that the questions of a technical or legal nature will be answered by Mr. Kowalchuk and so must be asked in English. Questions about shale gas will be answered by Ms. Melanson or Mr. Imberger. Ms. Melanson will take shale gas questions posed in French. I believe each of you was given a copy of the news release and Nebraska statement of claim against the province of New Brunswick, along with some other information in the media kits when you arrived. In a moment, Nebraska Chairman Roy Reese will be making a statement. He will then chair the questions and answer session. Please ask Mr. Reese your questions and he will refer it to one of the people at the table. Finally, there should be time at the end for questions for longer interviews with Nebraska spokespeople, if any of you require that. I now ask the Nebraska Chairman Roy Reese to make his opening statement. Welcome. And I just want you to know, for those of you from the media, that uh, later this afternoon, the press statement will go out uh, electronically to all of you, uh, so that, will, that should be in your electronic mail. As, uh, as uh, I was introduced, my name is Roy Reese, and I want to welcome you to what is a really historic day for the people of New Brunswick. Earlier this morning, Nebraska formally filed a statement of claim against the province of New Brunswick in Court of Queen's Bench. We are asking the courts to place a moratorium on the development of unconventional shale gas and oil in our province until such time as long-term population-based scientific studies demonstrate that it can be done safely. The three plaintiffs acting for the basket in this action are myself, Roy Reese, Jim Emberger, and Carol Ring. 
Nebraska did not take the decision to launch, to launch the court action lightly, but we were given no choice. For more than three years, we have been desperately trying to get the provincial government to listen to the independent scientists and doctors sounding the alarm about this industry. Um, a massive opposition to such development has been initiated by the people affected. And, and this, uh, this includes uh, 20,000 signatures on a petition. We've made 25 presentations during the, the Voice of the People tour in order to bring the scientific evidence to the people in every corner of the province. Uh, we've made appeals to the ombudsman. Uh, we've, we've conducted peaceful marches. And many of the municipalities and professional associations and community organizations in New Brunswick are calling for either an outright ban or a moratorium to the development of unconventional oil and gas in New Brunswick. For four years ago, the Allward government um, made a decision to develop shale gas, uh, gas and announce it as a, as a fait accompli. Uh, since then, it has ignored and dismissed out of hand the growing mountain of scientific evidence about the threat posed by this industry. We had only two options. Um, we, we either could turn a blind eye to the life-threatening activities authorized by the provincial government or to do our utmost to protect the lives of people here today and our children and grandchildren tomorrow. Well, that's no choice at all. And after four years of trying for every peaceful means possible to communicate the dangers of the industry to the government, we find ourselves here today. There is simply no way to develop shale gas in New Brunswick using current technologies without needlessly jeopardizing people's lives. Alors, je vais introduire assez rapidement je vais pas tout répéter ce qu'il a dit, mais les, les, les points saillants. Alors, aujourd'hui, c'est un, un moment historique pour le peuple de Beaubrunswick. Ce, ce matin, l'Alliance Antigas de Chisse a formellement posé une action judiciaire contre le gouvernement du Nouveau-Brunswick à la Cour du Banc de la Reine. Nous demandons à la Cour d'imposer un moratoire sur le développement non conventionnel du gaz et du pétrole de Chisse. À trois demandeurs font, ont, ont, font partie de ce, ce, cette action, Roy Reese, Jim Emberger et Carol Bray. C'est une décision qui a, été, qui a demandé beaucoup de réflexion, mais le gouvernement ne nous laisse aucun choix. Depuis plus de trois ans, nous tentons de convaincre le gouvernement de um, porter leur attention aux chercheurs, aux médecins qui expriment euh, de plus en plus euh, leur inquiétude face à cette industrie. La population a entrepris, euh, a entrepris maintes démarches pour essayer de s'exprimer euh, et exprimer notre opposition. Il y a eu 20 000 pétitions de, de données au gouvernement, il y a eu des manifestations paisibles, le tour de la voix du peuple qui a fait 25 présentations afin de disséminer à, dans, à l'intérieur du la population, les, les faits scientifiques qui uh, so, sont à la base de, de nos préoccupations. Et um, nous avons communiqué avec l'Ombudsman uh, et, et, et maintes associations et, et groupes uh, ont, ont aussi se sont exprimés, uh, uh, ont fait des déclarations à uh, des, des associations, associations professionnelles uh, et uh, aussi des municipalités, des communautés qui se sont prononcées contre le gaz et euh, Mais depuis quatre ans, le gouvernement Howard a pris la décision d'aller de l'avant euh, et il nous a présenté ça comme un fait accompli. Euh, et il reste très ferme euh, euh, de ne pas écouter nos demandes et euh, porte aucune attention aux études euh, qui sont publiées de plus en plus, en plus grand nombre. Alors, nous, sont, nous sentons que nous n'avons pas de choix que d'agir afin de, de contrer les agissements du gouvernement qui autorisent des activités qui mettent le bien-être et la santé de nos citoyens à risque. The Basque will provide the court with independent, peer-reviewed scientific studies and research 
documenting the potentially catastrophic threat to human life and the environment posed by development of unconventional shale gas and oil deposits. We will document the damage to health and the many illnesses associated with the industry, including cancer in adults and congenital heart defects and low birth weights for babies born near shale gas wells. Uh, we will document the, the life-threatening contamination of air, water, and land associated with the development of shale gas using current technologies. Our water, air, and land are the sources of light on the planet. We will document that the unconventional oil and gas industry is also a threat to the very planet itself through its acceleration of climate change. The notion that we should sacrifice the very water, air, and land we need to sustain life in order to create a few short-term uh, unsustainable jobs is madness. The bastard cannot stand by idly while the very font of life that sustains us is threatened with destruction. Alors, je vais continuer où j'étais. Malgré tous nos démarches antérieures pour communiquer les dangers que nous voyons au gouvernement, nous nous retrouvons ici aujourd'hui. Ah, il est impossible d'aller de l'avant avec cette industrie sans mettre le bien-être des citoyens du Nouveau-Brunswick à risque. Alors, nous allons présenter à la Cour des études indépendantes évaluées par les pairs, parlant de la santé, de l'air, de l'eau et de la contamination de, ce, de, de ça et le sol. Uh, et um, nous, nous notons aussi que toute la, toute la science qui parle de, du changement de climat et que tout, tout les, cette industrie, toutes ces industries qui, qui peuvent mettre encore plus, plus à risque uh, le développement de... de, de, de changement de climat. Alors, euh, euh, je, vais, je vais demander un autre en Ok. Ok. We've been referring uh, to our, our legal action as the science suit. And that's a very succinct summary on the Basque's approach. We will be asking the court to make its decision based on science. To, to date, the scientific studies that have been done show that the activities, processes, and technologies used by the shale gas industry are so dangerous that, that they violate the constitutional right of the Brunswickers, indeed all Canadians, to the security of a person guaranteed in Section 7 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. I note that the security of the person protected by Section 7 of the Charter uh, includes the right of all Canadians to health and to clean drinking water. It is our position that the government of Brunswick cannot legally take decisions that needlessly threaten the life and health of its citizens by allowing the water they depend on to drink, the air they depend on to breathe, to be so polluted as to be incapable of sustaining, of sustaining life. The new day at dawning in, in New Brunswick, this is really exciting. A new day where the protection of our families, our neighbors, our communities is more important than private partisan uh, agendas. We all share a moral obligation to, to do our utmost uh, to ensure that the generations not yet born will also have clean air uh, to breathe and fresh water to drink. The air, water, and land that sustain all life are common heritage to every generation and that we hold in trust for future generations. Uh, the heritage of life uh, that our air, water, and water represent for all generations is not ours to despoil and to ruin. And as we mentioned before, any questions that you have about the science will be answered by Ms. Melanson and Mr. Emberger, and any question, and in French and English, and any questions that you have about the legal issues will be uh, addressed by Larry Kowalczyk. Thank you very much for coming. Alors, à date, la science actuelle démontre que les processus et technologies de l'industrie de gaz de pétrole de risque sont si dangereux qu'ils ne respectent pas le droit constitutionnel de tous les néo-nouveaux-brunswickois et de tous les Canadiens d'ailleurs à la sécurité de la personne garantie par la section 7 
du Charte des droits et des libertés. Tous les Canadiens ont droit à la santé et à l'hôpital. Nous déclarons que le gouvernement du Nouveau-Brunswick ne peut pas légalement prendre des décisions qui exposent les citoyens à des risques à leur vie, santé et, et permettant que l'eau et l'air sur lesquels nous dépendons deviennent trop polluées pour qu'on puisse en, en profiter. Alors, pour nous, c'est un jour historique et euh, euh, je ne vais pas tout répéter ce que M. Euh, Reese a dit, mais nous sommes là et nous sommes con pas contents d'être là. C'est triste que nous soyons là, mais c'est quand même un, une démarche que nous pensons que nous avons, nous avons le devoir. Just open the floor for questions and please direct them to the comment person that you have. Du financement, comment vous allez financer? Uh... Um, ben, si nous, nous avons fait des levées de fonds, nous continuerons à faire des levées de fonds parmi les citoyens et les organismes qui veulent nous soutenir. Et vous êtes rendu à combien d'argent? Merci, jusqu'à maintenant. Nous avons 100 000 dollars maintenant. Et nous, avons, nous aurons besoin de plus encore, là, quand, aussi, là, au fur et à mesure que le processus peut avancer. Et nous allons euh, faire des levées de fonds. Vous espérez en avoir combien au total? C'est quoi votre objectif? On n'a pas d'objectif final. Do we have an objective? A final objective in terms of how much we want? Victory. However, how many power do we need? So, we need a second. Can you say Christ? Oh, yes. Uh, you were asking how we raised. Yes. Uh, the, do you want to answer, sir? Okay. Uh, they were asked, asking us how, how much, how we got the money together to, to go ahead with this. And we've been raising money every way we can think of. It's legal and, and fun. <laughs> and going to various organizations and individuals for donations. And we've achieved the, the goal that we set before we could begin the process, which was $100,000. How much are you expecting to cost? Um, we have no idea. We, we, we hope to get, get enough money to do to do what needs to be done. And that, and we, so we're going to go on with our fundraising activities. And how long are you planning to keep this going? Well, until we as, win. Long as, as long as it takes till, till we win. What is the timeline on this? I mean, how will this proceed at this point? This is a question for Mr. Polchek. Could you answer that from the podium? I have no clue. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the court process lays out various stages and steps. It depends on what position the government takes and how they want to respond and how they approach it. What would be the next step? I mean, what happens from here? Um, the government's turn to file a response called the uh, Defense Statement of Defense. Have you heard anything from the government yet? No, they just got served this morning. How long would that generally take? How long are you hoping it will take? Best case scenario. You, you have various options. I mean, one, one uh, option is to just simply agree to go to court and call the evidence and get the, the, the case decided. Sometimes there's other options that people choose. But I would hope that sees this as an honest discussion that needs to be heard and uh, taken seriously. Is there a legal precedent for, for something like this? Um, I can tell you that in, there's two parts of this. One of them is related to shale gas or unconventional oil and gas development and fracking. There are a ton of lawsuits in the United States, a lot successful. About the damage that's been done. There are a growing number of lawsuits that are being filed around that. Uh, in terms of climate change, um, what's important about this lawsuit is that it's, it's, it includes the notion that we're in the middle of climate change. And if you pay attention to, I don't know, the Pope, Barack Obama, the scientists, uh, insurance companies, around the world are starting to file uh, lawsuits because they are worried that climate change is upon us and how long it's going to take. In terms of Canada itself,
itself, this might be the first lawsuit where climate change is actually deemed, sorry, before the courts. Uh, in terms of success, uh, previously, the Charter Section 7, the right to life, liberty, and security of the person, I mean, our, our position is quite straightforward in the statement of claim. I mean, if, if the right to life and security of the person does include the right to health, uh, which, I mean, water, air, I mean, you can't live without it. Uh, we think that's a pretty you know, important argument. Uh, people are making that argument in Canada, but there's no definitive statement about that in the courts yet. Shale gas exploration continues in the province. I mean, the government seems that it's no longer due action. It's simply said, do you think this is going to make I, if I could answer that question, I would be up there, right, down here. I would pose that to the to the government. Um, we are seeking a, a, an order to stop it until the case is heard, once we see their response. So we'll be looking at that as well. Um, but um, we would hope that the government sees this. I mean, the Brunswick's at a historic moment. You're actually at a historic moment compared to most other provinces in Canada, or even most of the United States, um, similar to actually the United Kingdom. Because climate change is upon us, and most people accept that, most of the scientists accept that. Um, New Brunswick is in a unique position. I mean, they've started shale gas exploration, but they are about to make a decision that could make this industry huge and its impact on climate change is quite significant. There's a recent uh, um, release from the United States where they've actually stated that shale gas itself contributes to the uh, carbon footprint more than coal, which we all accept is too dirty. So the U.S. has just accepted that fact. So. The people in the Brunswick and the, and the government could say, you know what, we have so much resources and so much money as citizens and as a government, let's spend it in a way that's going to not contribute to climate change. And, and you're at that moment right now in the Brunswick. That's a, and, and why wouldn't you want to do that? You can create jobs this way that are for present and future generations to protect air, water, land. Through this path, which the science is quite clear about. You're at a turning point right now. Will the outcome of the upcoming election have any uh, role in how this plays out? And <laughs> That's not a question the lawyer will answer. <laughs> <It's right now. laughs> um, well, we would certainly hope that uh, that the um, the government, as uh, Larry said, you know, will take this seriously now that we're in court, uh, and that anybody who's elected in the next election, you know, we'll respond accordingly. Um, if we do, in fact, get an injunction, of course, then that, you know, will be, in, uh, uh, be enforced upon whatever government comes in. So, uh, yes, I do think it changes the dynamic. Uh, I can't tell you how that will play out, but I certainly think that uh, it, will, it changes the landscape, you know, considerably. Protests, will we see any more protests, or are you supporting protests? Uh, this is, you know, not an either or thing. Um, you know, we are in court because, as Roy said in his statement, you know, we've tried pretty much everything else, but we certainly believe in you know peaceful protest as a way of you know manifesting public opinion. And uh, if uh, if there were activities going on, I certainly expect that there will be protest. Uh, and then same thing in the political um, uh, realm with the election coming up. You know, um, citizens you know, will be protesting. We have not planned, if you're asking if we have planned a particular action, uh, protest action, at this point, no. We have seen the same amount of protests that we've seen. Let me finish him first, go ahead. We have seen the same amount of protests with Logan being blocked, which saw last summer, that kind of thing. Do you think this is a sign, maybe, that the movement could be delayed, or do you think that it's still as strong as it was? No, and I think it's it's easily as strong as it was. It's it's hard to, you know, maintain a, uh, a full speed ahead, you know, on the front battle lines, you know, attitude over four years, which is what we're doing. So certainly things are reactive. 
you know, uh, but you know, you can drive down to Hillsborough where we've been staying, or you can drive the roads over in in, in Stanley and, and came out to where I live, and you know, you'll still see all the no shell gas lines up there. And we did our Voice of the People tour. Uh, we hit like 26 places around the province, and uh, their turnouts varied, but they, you know, we had at some events hundreds of people, you know, some did small places, you know, 20, 30, 50 people, uh, but. It was a very responsive audience. It wasn't preaching to the choir. I mean, about a third of the people there were preaching to the choir. But I would, I would say, my just my personal estimation, about another third uh, were just people who, you know, have been sort of following it, but you know, really didn't have good information and were looking for it. And another third, who hard to believe, but it's still true after four years, really didn't know much about it. So we had at the end of our presentations uh, very good responses from the audience all around. So the answer is the word of mouth uh, that we've started over four years and now the community organizations that have called for moratoriums, et cetera, et cetera, I think that the movement is probably pretty strong. Jim, you guys obviously have your scientific backgrounds that you're putting forward and putting your thoughts forward and the, and the province has their views where they put whatever forward and say we feel this is safe. Where's the disconnect here? I mean, obviously, the, there's huge disconnect here. But, well, the disconnect is that uh, we have the science and they don't. I mean, I can't put it more simple than that. I mean, I would, I would, I would challenge any reporter in this room to tell me one actual study that Craig Leonard has mentioned by name when he says we have studies proving it's safe, because the the answer is that there aren't any. You know, there are studies that prove that it is probably bad. Some of them prove that it's like pretty bad. You know, some of them say, we think it's bad, it needs more study. But there aren't any that say that, oh, we can do this without causing any problems. They just don't exist. And, and that's the disconnect. That, and that's the, the, the tact that we've been trying to take as an organization. It's like, oh, the science is here. You know, um, if you look through our statement of claim, every one of the things that you'll read in there, we make an assertion about, uh, about uh, harm, et cetera. We didn't put them in there before we went to all the science and you know, laid out where it came from. I mean, just recently we had the Canadian Academy, uh, Canadian Council of Canadian Academies, you know, that came out with their big review, and essentially it was everything that we've been saying for the last four years. Uh, you know, and, and, and the government can try to spin that all they want. But the fact is that they basically said what we were saying. So, uh, so that's where the disconnect is. It's willful ignorance, basically. Other questions? Final countdown. <laughs> I know it's late in the day and everybody's got that behind me. But uh, we will be here um, uh, with people at the front here to answer any longer uh, questions you might have uh, in, in an interview. Um, and if not, then um, you know, thank you all for coming. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, our telephone numbers are on there, and most of you probably have emails. Uh, certainly, we're available to respond that way as well. Thank you.